it's hard to put into words really. I um I went on the the Great Hall set earlier and um I I kind of sh we shot a bit for this. And it's all dressed and there's all these essays in there doing this incredible dancing and everyone's in costume and it's all, you know, set for a ball. And I kind of just walked straight in and did my bit without really looking around as if like it was kind of just back to work, which is weird, it was 10 years later. Um, and I tried, to, I, I, I just suddenly thought for a moment, hang on, just recall where you are right now. Just take a moment. I'm quite bad at ever just having a moment and taking things in around me. I kind of get tunnel vision quite a bit in life. I took a moment to just sort of look around the Great Hall and sort of take it in and try and think about the significance of it, of, of being back on there. Seeing everyone was, that was wild. It was really cool. It was really surreal in, in, the, in that it didn't feel like it was, it wasn't unusual, it was great and it was cool, but it was like, oh, we're just, we're back here again. It very much felt like that. We all, even though it was 10 years ago since we finished, it still feels so close to me anyway, time-wise, it feels very close. I think Neville, um, well, he meant a lot to me growing up, um, not, not least because I played him, obviously, but, but, but just, just what he stood for, really. Um, the goodness in him, the fact that through all of life's challenges, you know, whether he was bullied at school or the, the things that happened in his childhood to his parents, he never, he never veered from the path. He, uh, he always stayed true to, to his ideals, to, to what he believed in and what was the right thing to do. And um, that's kind of hard, I think. You know, people do get rocked by a lot and Neville got rocked by a lot and he never let it shift his, his morals, his ethics. And I think that's quite a, that's important. He could have been forgiven for holding some bitterness and, and resentment at life um, for everything that happened to him. And he never did. And, and he worked tirelessly um, to fight the good fight. And, um, and that's an incredible strength of character. He's a beacon of light in, in the story, I think, and uh, an inspiration for us all. It's hard to put into words, really. I, um, I went on the, the Great Hall set earlier, and um, I, I kind of, sh we shot a bit for this. And it's all dressed, and there's all these essays in there doing this incredible dancing, and everyone's in costume, and it's all you know, set for a ball. And I kind of just walked straight in and did my bit without really looking around, as if like it was kind of just back to work, which is weird, it was 10 years later. Um, and I tried, to, I, I, I just suddenly thought for a moment, hang on, just recall where you are right now. Just take a moment. I'm quite bad at ever just having a moment and taking things in around me. I kind of get tunnel vision quite a bit in life. I took a moment to just sort of look around the Great Hall and sort of take it in and try and think about the significance of it, of, of being back on there. Seeing everyone was, that was wild. It was really cool. It was really surreal in, in, the, in that it didn't feel like it was, it wasn't unusual, it was great and it was cool, but it was like, oh, we're just, we're back here again. It very much felt like that. We all, even though it was 10 years ago since we finished, it still feels so close to me anyway, time-wise, it feels very close. I think Neville, um, well, he meant a lot to me growing up, um, not, not least because I played him, obviously, but, but, but just, just what he stood for, really. Um, the goodness in him, the fact that through all of life's challenges, you know, whether he was 
bullied at school or the, the things that happened in his childhood to his parents, he never, he never veered from the path. He, uh, he always stayed true to, to his ideals, to, to what he believed in and what was the right thing to do. And um, that's kind of hard, I think. You know, people do get rocked by a lot and Neville got rocked by a lot and he never let it shift his, his morals, his ethics. And I think that's quite a, that's important. He could have been forgiven for holding some bitterness and, and resentment at life um, for everything that happened to him and he never did. And, and he worked tirelessly um, to fight the good fight. And, um, and that's an incredible strength of character. He's a beacon of light in, in the story, I think, and uh, an inspiration for us all. It's really kind of strange when you drive up because it was once, it felt like there was uh, just a field because it would obviously been uh, an, uh, an airport, not an airport, yeah, an RAF testing base or something like that. And it didn't, it felt like it, because it had a runway still, before, which is where they built the Dursley's house on the runway, none of which is, is, is here now. So it feels kind of strange because it now feels very formal. I've seen people do, someone did a knitted version of me. Uh, no, not even knitted. Uh, what's it called? Felting, where you actually just stick bits of wool into something until, until it binds on itself. There's a felted version of me, which I thought was kind of, seems so soft and cuddly for the character, it was quite dark. There's a bit where I sort of, uh, my character um, flies to when he's revealed himself to be Voldemort, and he flies towards Harry Potter to try and kill him. I remember thinking, how are they going to do this? You know what I mean? Thinking, what's the, the technical and physical aspect of doing this? It was so interesting to see that kind of a flying mechanism and just, I just enjoyed flying. It was as close as you're going to get. It's really kind of strange when you drive up because it was once, it felt like there was a, just a field because it would obviously have been uh, an, uh, an airport, not an airport, yeah, an RAF testing base or something like that. And it didn't, it felt like it, because it had a runway still, before, which is where they built the Dursley's house on the runway, none of which is, is, is here now. So it feels kind of strange because it now feels very formal. I've seen people do, someone did a knitted version of me. Uh, no, not even knitted. Uh, what's it called? Felting, where you actually just stick bits of wool into something until, until it binds on itself. There's a felted version of me, which I thought was kind of... Seems so soft and cuddly for the character, it was quite dark. There's a bit where I sort of, uh, my character um, flies to when he's revealed himself to be Voldemort. And he flies towards Harry Potter to try and kill him. I remember thinking, how are they going to do this? You know what I mean? Thinking, what's the, the technical and physical aspect of doing this? And it was so interesting to see that kind of a flying mechanism. And just, I just enjoyed flying. It was as close as you're going to get. It's just been like a, a family reunion, literally. You gotta remember when they started, they were about eight. I think the oldest of them was eleven. Now they're big grown ups with their own lives. And um, uh, Grint's had a baby. Grint's now a father. And um, it's just it's, it's just astonishing the change, you know. And watching them growing up was kind of watching, kind of like watching your own kids grow up, you know, because you were sort of protecting them from them. But uh, that was, it was never really an issue how young they were, because I was talking to, actually, Christopher Columbus is around today. The great thing is that an awful lot of the crew were parents themselves. So everyone was on their best behavior, no fighting or swearing on set, you know, everyone just thought, kids, you know. And I, I was always um, astonished at how 
fearless they were. Because you, you've been to the Great Hall. I remember walking into the Great Hall, and I've been doing this for 30 years, and thinking, dear Lord, you know, whoa, better get this one right, you know. And they were just kind of, you know, the way kids do, you know. Yeah, yeah. Now, I do have a, a, enormous happy memories of this, actually. I think we all do. Everybody in the world would like a really big, huge, strong, good man on their side. As simple as that. And I mean, I mean, that's the attraction of Superman and all these things. Um, that, you know, you wish there was a power for good in the world that was irresistible um, to the bad guys, you know. And Haggard was always, Haggard was always obviously the good guy, wasn't he? And the way he looked after Harry, and he was the guy who told him he was a wizard. And he's, he's there at the start. So it was a lovely part to play for that reason. And we had a lot of fun with it, you know. And um, he's strictly speaking not allowed to do magic, but he does occasionally, you know, just because he can't resist it. You know? <laughs> his, his pink umbrella, which I thought was a nice touch. Because you don't often see a man who was eight foot six with a pink umbrella, do you? <laughs> not in my life, anyway. It's just been like a, a family reunion, literally. You've got to remember, when they started, they were about eight. I think the oldest of them was 11. Now they're big grown-ups with their own lives. And um, uh, Grint's had a baby. Grint's now a father. And um, it's, just, it's, it's just astonishing, the change, you know. And watching them growing up was kind of watching, kind of like watching your own kids grow up, you know because you were sort of protecting them from the world. But uh, that was, it was never really an issue how young they were, because I was talking to, actually, Christopher Columbus is around today. The great thing is that an awful lot of the crew were parents themselves. So everyone was on their best behavior, no fighting or swearing on set, you know, everyone just thought, kids, you know. And I, I was always um, astonished at how fearless they were, because you, you've been to the Great Hall, I remember walking into the Great Hall, and I've been doing this for 30 years, and think, dear Lord, you know, whoa, better get this one right, you know. And they were just kind of, you know, the way kids do, you know. Yeah, yeah. Now, I do have a, a, enormous happy memories of this, actually. I think we all do. Everybody in the world would like a really big, huge, strong, good man on their side, as simple as that. And I mean, I mean, that's the attraction of Superman and all these things um, that, you know, you wish there was a power for good in the world that was irresistible um, to the bad guys, you know. And Haggard was always, Haggard was always obviously the good guy, wasn't he? And the way he looked after Harry, and he was the guy who told him he was a wizard, and he's, he's there at the start. So it was a lovely part to play for that reason. And we had a lot of fun with it, you know. And um, he's strictly speaking not allowed to do magic, but he does occasionally, you know, just because he can't resist it. You know? <laughs> with his, his pink umbrella, which I thought was a nice touch. Because you don't often see a man who was eight foot six with a pink umbrella, do you? <laughs> not in my life, anyway.